Hi there, and welcome to a follow-up uh, on our QQE Spotlight. In this video, we'll uh, have a look at how to identify the uh, fast and slow signal line crossovers, over oversold and overbought levels, trend settings, and uh, how to set up the uh, QQE with a nested uh, input. And uh, just to kick off here, a quick uh, recap of uh, the QQE uh, signals. We're looking for uh, these crossovers. And so uh, long setup when the fast cross above uh, the slow signal line to the upside and opposite uh, short when uh, the fast cross below the slow to the downside. And then uh, we have uh, additional uh, levels or thresholds uh, that can help you define a directional bias. For example, the midline. So you can condition these crossovers and say you only want uh, long setups to occur if uh, the RSI is moving uh, above the 50 threshold and uh, you only want to take uh, short setups uh, if uh, moving below. And then uh, finally, we have uh, the overbought and oversold thresholds 70 and 30 by default. And uh, we'll look at how to locate those with um, Bloodhound from Shark Indicators as well. And uh, uh, potentially some exit opportunities for directional trades or reversal uh, setups in these areas. And uh, finally, we'll look at how to uh, choose between the uh, two trend definitions that we offer with the QQE indicator cross versus thrust, and also how to set up a nested input. Um, that's when you apply one indicator to another, which in some cases um, can provide quite, uh, quite helpful to create custom indicators that way. So I think that's a good uh, place to start just to have a look at how to configure the different uh, settings on the chart here to start off. And then uh, we'll move uh, into Bloodhound and a strategy template uh, as we go along here. Uh, what stands out in this example is this uh, uh, trend change here that was not very uh, clever or, or helpful. So we see a crossover here, not supported by price action. And that is, in fact, uh, exactly what the uh, thrust trend definition is designed to do. It uh, looks for a up thrust or down thrust to support a uh, QQE crossover. So if we choose here uh, that uh, trend definition, uh, we will see uh, it display on the paint bars and namely that this crossover is now ignored in the, the trend reading on the paint bars because there was no down thrust to support uh, this uh, crossover here. So there was no trend change and we were able to stay in the position for the duration of the move. The flip side of uh, this uh, trend definition uh, is then uh, that we have uh, slightly delayed trend entries. So for example, here we see a crossover to the downside, uh, but the thrust bar doesn't occur before here. So the, the exit uh, for this um, long position is a little bit delayed when compared to the, the cross. But I think you can uh, see the benefit of uh, filtering out uh, any noise signals that would have gotten us out way too early in uh, in this example here. All right, so um, now we'll uh, go into the uh, other indicator settings here. Uh, we can uh, start with making the uh, threshold levels a little bit more visible since we're going to start uh, working with those uh, here shortly. So you'll find that under lines here. I think we'll use red for the uh, upper threshold, seeing that can be a cell 
opportunity for a directional trade or potentially a re reversal setup. I'll also make the lines here a little bit uh, thicker. Uh, we'll choose blue for the midline and uh, a buy to cover or a long reversal opportunity below the 30 threshold. You can also change the threshold levels as mentioned uh, by default, they are set to 70 and 30. So hit OK here. And uh, now we have a little bit better visibility over bought and uh, oversold levels and the uh, mid-level trend threshold. I think what we'll do is also just to show you how to work with a nested input. Uh, we'll uh, use the Heikenashi bars as input. Uh, in this example, so then you go in here and choose from indicators. The library indicators are located here under the listed indicators folder. I choose the Heikenashi bars here, and then you will find four plots here. Uh, basically, uh, Heikenashi candles are calculated from the open, high, low, and close of uh, the primary bar. So technically speaking, that means that the algorithm requires a open, high, low, and close as input data for those bars or, or candles, if you will. Um, but when you're using a indicator as input series, and that is what we're doing here, um, Ninja Trader can only pro process a single plot of that indicator. Uh, it is not uh, designed uh, to process several plots from one single indicators and use them as input uh, for another indicator. So the appropriate plot here uh, is uh, the close value. So just make sure that you choose that uh, when using the Heikenashi as a, a nested input. So not a huge uh, difference, but you see the smoother output here by the Heikenashi and uh, it's a little bit more sensitive to these uh, overbought and oversold levels. So that might be helpful for identifying these uh, overbought and oversold thresholds and reversal opportunities. But for now, let's uh, just go back uh, into the default settings uh, of the QQE indicator transition into the Bloodhound tutorial at, uh, at this point. Uh, so I uh, will uh, start working here with the crossover solver here, add it, and then we can say QQE fast slow crossover and then start working with the input values, locate the QQE, choose the fast and the slow for input B, like so. And here we already see Bloodhound is working in the background. Crossover here and here and here and here. So we see very quickly that there are many crossovers, uh, which is where these uh, threshold levels come in and can use a threshold solver for that. But uh, I personally like to use this indicator comparison solvers. And so I will just simply here set the uh, RSI value above, below the 50 uh, threshold. Again, grab the QQE. The RSI is the value that I want to use that. It's, uh, it's a little bit uh, more responsive than the fast and the slow triggers. So uh, if I'm moving above the midline, I'm looking for a long setup and conversely for short. So we'll set here a fixed value at 50. Long output above, short output below as mentioned and pull it together here in a new logic. Grab the solvers that we created for this. Connect them via a AND logic node. And now we see that we have a long output here when the RSI is moving above the midline, the crossovers to the downside are ignored or blocked. 
So uh, what we can uh, follow up with uh, here now is to identify these uh, overbought and uh, oversold thresholds as well. Seeing that we already have this uh, 50 level threshold in here, we can just go ahead and copy that and say RSI is above 70. In that case, uh, we would only want to consider short trades, I think. Uh, you do not want to go long <laughs> in a uh, overbought scenario. So uh, let's uh, eliminate the long signals here and um, the short output should be reconfigured to say that we want to evaluate that when we are above the 70 level. And of course, you need to specify that in, as the fixed value as well. Do the same for the 30 level. Now we're looking for RSI values below the 30 level. And so the long output as well, reconfigure to state that. Create a new logic for this. So let's name this RSI plus crossover. And the oversold and overbought need to be connected with a OR node, they cannot be uh, with a AND node because it's either overbought or oversold. <laughs> you can have those two conditions at the same time. Uh, but if we're looking for crossovers in those areas, uh, we need to connect it with a AND node like so. And in this case, uh, we have a overbought finding a crossover to the downside here. And so this would have um, turned out as a pretty good exit signal for the long scenario that we defined here earlier. All right, so um, going back into the template, I think we need to rename this one here, the QQE directional, I think we can call that. And then contrasting that with the RSI and the overbought or oversold plus the crossover. So those are the two basic applications that I had planned on showing here today. Um, we can, however, also show how to nest uh, the input here. Perhaps we'll uh, just uh, do that with the overbought and oversold levels. So we'll just go ahead here and copy the RSI overbought and say um, HA for Heikinashi input and going into the indicator value uh, to create a nested input. You will first need to locate uh, the indicator that you want to use. So we said uh, the Heikinashi for this. And then you select it, you do not double click it, you just select it with one click. And then you use this nest input here. Next, you select the nested input because remember, uh, we cannot use all the four input series that are used uh, on uh, the price information for the Heikinashi candles. So we need to choose one of these plots and the appropriate one is of course the close. So we will choose that here. And that way we will have the Heikinashi as input series for the um, overbought conditions here. Uh, do the same for the oversold. Now, if you're interested in a little bit more uh, information about uh, the uh, Heikinashi bars or Heikinashi candles. We do have some information on that uh, on our blog. So I can show you that uh, shortly here. I think we need to create a um, Heikinashi input on this as well to 
complete our example here. You always need to have a chart setting which uh, reflects what you have uh, for your strategy template. Now we can go in here and create a new logic. Let's go with the Heikenashi input here. Again, using a OR logic node. So you see it's a little bit more sensitive with the Heikenashi bars as input series. More information uh, on the uh, Heikenashi bars are available on our page, uh, first um, in the library. Menu button here, all indicators will take you to a overview. Otherwise you have the different categories here. But, uh, here you have the Heikenashi bars. And you can download if you remember by going to the download link. And then uh, on our blog, we have these spotlight posts that tell you a little bit more background on some of the uh, indicators that we're highlighting. And towards the bottom of the page here, there is a further explanation about the Heikenashi indicator and the Heikenashi bars. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to uh, wrap up uh, this uh, little tutorial video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out uh, at info at lizardindicators.com. Otherwise, drop me a line in the contact form over at Lizard Indicators. Always happy to hear from you. So uh, until then, take care and bye-bye.